Hey there, welcome back to the Path to Zion podcast where we are rediscovering the ancient way. We are about to enter into part 11, part 11 of inhabitants who are meant to sojourn, a call to come out. Now I will admit, when we first started this series, I thought it would probably be two or three parts. I had no idea that all the events that have transpired in the last two weeks would. And so it's become a little bit, it's become larger than life, really. Um, if you go all the way back to the introduction, part one and two, when we, when we laid the groundwork of why I even brought this up, how the father led me to Genesis chapter 26, with Isaac redigging the wells of his father Abraham, and how we, we see a biblical pattern in, in an individual of what started and originated in his father Abraham. To what? To go out, leave your land, leave your country, go to a country which I will show you. And you're going to have seed, offspring. Generations and generations are going to be blessed and, and come into this inheritance covenantal land because of your sojourning and your willingness to go. And he did, thankfully so. And we saw in his son Isaac Although a little more stubborn to do so, and a little bumpy along the way, he did do that. He did go. And when I first started making the connections of, of, of Isaac being a sojourner and the biblical call for the people of, of Yahweh to be ones who are, who are awaiting a land yet before them, I knew it clicked. I knew it made sense. I, I, I was convinced that this is the... the, the the precursor of the American dream dying is, is challenging people, whoever would listen, evangelical patriotic Americans, tra challenging them or you, whichever the case, to be willing to come out from among them and be separate. Now, this has become much weightier than it started. Um, again, this, this has been continually added to in great measure. I mean, it started out as a four-page study. And now I'm at, I believe, 25 pages typed. As we add texts, as we add dialogue about current ongoing events that have transpired since we started, it's become quite lengthy, obviously. But as we talk about part 11, I, I want to precede what I'm going to share here with reflecting back on what I shared in part 10. And I, and I, I don't necessarily want to apologize, but I guess like I can do that. I'm not opposed to apologizing and saying I was wrong. But I just want to explain, I guess, my emotion behind this. Maybe a little bit more than I generally do. Because people have rightly said, you know, a, few in, a handful of individuals over the two years I've done this podcast have just have, have rightly instructed me, counseled me, corrected me. Joel, you just sound angry. You're going to lose people and run them off if you sound angry. I've received that correction. I'm not above correction. I'm not above it at all. I've received that. I've adjusted that. We In this series, I heard that the very uh, early on in the first, maybe third part, four maybe. Just a caution. Like, you just sound angry. And okay, so I took, if, if you remember, if you followed this series from the beginning, I took several days to really seek the Father and say, I don't want to deliver this in my own version of angst and unrest, free from the peace of Yeshua that we've already talked about. Now, that being said, I get very emotionally stirred about this topic. Why? Well, again, this isn't advantageous for me, and all of a sudden, like, <laughs> this gets us millions of hits. As I said, this, this does not tickle ears. It's not favorable. It won't be popular. So, well, what's the purpose? And what's, why do I get so emotional, to stick to my point? People that I love, people I honor, people I really look up to, I feel are blinded to this specifically. Opened eyes in many ways. Brilliant men, godly men. Mature women, spiritually mature. Brothers and sisters. Yet in this area, in many ways, if not entirely, just 
literally ignorant of it. Educated men who understand gods and goddesses and, and, and ancient idolatry and the biblical mandates to, to have no other idols and how Yahweh is intolerant of, of idol worship in every possible way. We've got to rid our homes of images and, and idols that are, are lurking in the shadows. Things I really love, man. I love that in, in people. Well, that's what we do here. We're constantly, I mean, I could go into personal examples about things that have literally been removed from our home because of that desire to purge ourselves of the ancient biblical understanding of things like Asherah poles. Anything that in my heart I'm offering a sacrifice unto. And so it's a tender thing for me. It's a tender topic, if you will, that really makes me want to shout from the rooftops, please consider that what you value and what you have branded so hard and tried so hard to impress the name of Yahweh upon is actually idolatrous pagan uh, and full of ancient idol worship. Please look at this and listen. Please at least listen and see what the Father says. And so when I, when I envision individuals or just the body as a whole, the beautiful bride of the Messiah, that is, that again, we're, we're told he, he's waiting for a bride made ready, and he's wanting to purge us all, his church, of, of, of every hint of idolatry. We've got, to, we've got to remind people. People need to remind me. These idols have got to go. They've got to go. And this one, man, I'm telling you, we started this back way when we started the, the series. Many people are open to many things of leaving them behind, forsaking traditions of men, uh, religious traditions, Christianity, you know, Western Christian thinking and traditions. Many people walk away from those. Eh, for some it's harder than others. But man, patriotic America, her roots are deep. Because, why? Because it's so mixed. Because it's not, because it masquerades as being a both and. It masquerades as having an altar to Yahweh Elohim and right beside it an altar to the goddess Libertas. Because they're because they're always together in this nation, you got in God we trust, and we got Lady, Lady Liberty. And because they're so, they're not, but because they're perceived and, and, and delivered to us through traditions, American traditions, that they can be synonymous, they've, they've merged, and there's been very little question from the church at large of challenging the idolatrous origins of patriotism, national loyalty. And so that's why I get so, ugh, I get so worked up. And I do apologize if that turns you off or, or pushes you away, not because of what I'm saying, but because of how I'm saying it. I do, I do apologize for my emotion. If it's a hindrance instead of an assistance to moving into what I believe Yahweh is trying to say to his church. So that being said, what we talked about in, in the, the previous part, 10, because again, I needed a couple more commentary episodes in light of what we witnessed on Wednesday and yesterday, Thursday. And again, today when I'm recording this, it's, it's Friday, January the 8th, 2021. Um, and so we talked about the events that unfolded Wednesday. And I said, and I don't, I don't, I don't shy away from this at all. I believe that the patriotic people who gathered on the ellipse in Washington District of Columbia were pawns. I believe they were used. I hate saying that because I, I, I can envision people that I love that were a part of it, and I just, I hate saying it. I don't enjoy it. <laughs> but it's true. There is something so large and so ancient old, rooted and established in gods and goddesses that the founding fathers worshipped and, and, and dedicated this nation to that, that still remain in stone form 
right where all those individuals Wednesday were standing that is greater than them. It's bigger. Like we referenced Rudy Giuliani saying, this isn't about this isn't about you, and this isn't about the president. This is about all of this. <laughs> and as I said in the last episode, that's the most true statement that was shared on Wednesday. <laughs> it's about the monuments. It's about the gods and goddesses. It's about Libertas, man. It's about them. And so <laughs> that's what we talked about in part 10, without rehashing all of it. Now, I did. It's worth mentioning again, in case you didn't watch it. Again, if you even if you've already watched it through filter through what I've just said last episode and all the way leading up to it. Go watch Trump's uh speech from yesterday when he conceded officially. And I'm telling you, there's I would love a I would love a dialogue with an individual like a pro-Trump individual and see if they see saw the same thing which is that's not the same man. That's not the same guy. Again, no mention of ballot fraud. No mention of fighting the liars and, and the Democrat rat people that they are. And nothing about fake news media. Nothing about false flags. And nothing about lies and deception. What was he, friends? Yesterday, he was a politician. And I'm saying he's been one all along. He's been one all along. He has played well. He has earned whatever he's been given. He has earned it. Why? He, not just him, but him in his role in this, in this film called America, he carried out to perfection, man. It's almost like, wow, <laughs> he's good. He carried out the role to perfection, man. To dupe patriotic evangelicals into acting in ways that are not like the Messiah, in hordes of numbers, and to buy into more than any generation previous. Just like we talked about with those, what were they, the, the sons of sons of freedom? I forget. Sons of liberty, maybe. And the liberty poles, and the liberty tree, and the Boston Tea Party, and rebellion, rebellion, rebellion. Man, a brother said this to me the other day. Shouldn't we be concerned at the outset that the entire source of this nation is rebellion? Huh. Well, depends who you ask. Some people love that. They love the warrior rebellious man. You know, the, the warrior man. They love the patriots. We already talked about that. We, we took that and hung it up on the wall and said, oh boy, don't want to be that. And so that is what's fueled all these things today that, that the, the, again, the ones who organize these things, man, they, I would like to say, well, they're just, man, these guys are good. But again, it's principalities and powers. It's not mere men. It's principalities and powers moving about through men and the governments of men and the kingdoms they're in. That's what we talked about all the time. That's the issue at hand are the principalities and powers who are ruling and governing this nation. That's the heart of all of this, deep down inside. And how does it play out? Through idolatry. Through men promoting their own freedoms, their own rights, hating one another, and anyone who would take it from them must die. That's really... And what is that? That's, that's the garden lie about you need to take matters into your own hands Deify yourself. If you don't look out for yourself and for your, your weak neighbor, nobody will. Stand up for liberty. Again, that's what the goddess Libertas was known for throughout entire ancient culture for defending the defenseless. It's interesting. So, moving on. And I do want to mention this real quick. Is anyone going to challenge the 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 modern day prophets i just want to ask that question is anybody going to challenge them is anyone going to call them out i mean leaders pastors are they going to are they going to stand up and separate themselves from these men are they going to make it clear i was wrong i was wrong all those dreams all those visions all of the book sales all of the prophetic updates all of the, oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes, 
The word of the Lord just told me again, Trump will have a second term. And people shout and they cry. Friend, I'm serious now. As a body member, as a member of the body of Messiah, do we not have a right to say, friends, you have affected the body. You've affected the body of Messiah like a disease. You have infected her with an advantageous tickling of the ear word that was prophesied in the scriptures that says you are a false prophet. An antichrist spirit. Is anyone going to say that? Because he did not win. He did not win, friends. Well, the prophet, if people had prayed harder, if Trump was obedient to, nobody said that then. No one, I need to stop. I'm just saying. I don't know if, if we can even do that. They're, they're too big. They're too beyond anyone saying anything. The people who have a voice and an opportunity to say, hey, brother, they're already on programs again. I saw this morning, YouTube feed, YouTube feed, YouTube feed. Now, the new word, the new word of the Lord for 2021. New word of the Lord, 2021. Revised, literally. This is what God's saying now because Trump was not obedient. This is what God's saying now because Pence was a rat. This is what God's saying now because of what Antifa did. Seriously. And people, amen, bless God. I don't understand that. I don't understand. Other than the, what the Word of God tells us. And, but even when we see prophecy unfolding, it's hard. Even when we see prophecy unfold in front of our eyes, it's hard to be like, no. No. <laughs> These people are literally still saying that Trump could win this election today. Today, people are saying that online. Oh my gosh, it never ends. It never ends. Liberty is a spiritual juggernaut. <laughs> She's huge. She's huge. I mean, I saw a prophet this morning releasing a new prophetic word with his books behind him, right? These books, and I'm making up titles, but like uh, Trump and King Cyrus in in 2021 or Trump's second term these are the books are still behind them excuse me I'm like you might want to take those down brother <laughs> you might want to take those books off the shelf it's a little embarrassing don't you think doesn't matter doesn't matter like literally it doesn't matter Ugh. so Wednesday the patriotic church gathered at the national hub of idolatry stood on Masonic cornerstones and cried out to liberty while invoking the name of God, of course. What has happened? What did it produce? Did it turn? Did it stop the steal? Yahweh's had enough. Yahweh has had enough of patriotic America. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Genesis 26.8. Genesis 26, that sounds familiar. Yep, that's where we've been every time we turn this on for two weeks now. All right, so let's read just 26a, okay? And I said this days ago, and now I feel like it's come to pass. And it came about in Genesis chapter, chapter 26, 28. Okay, we know that, that Yahweh instructed Isaac to sojourn through this land. Go on. Go on, Isaac. I'm going to bring you to a promise that I will reveal to you Move, travel. We don't have time to rehearse, re rehash all the stuff we've talked about. Sojourner versus dweller. And it came about when he, Isaac, had been there in Gerar a long time, that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out through a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was caressing his his wife, Rebecca. He calls out, Wait, this she's your wife, this and that. What is it? What is this you've done? Oh, I don't even know if I can get this. <laughs> okay, so let me just say this. I, I don't even have time to go to this. I said to my wife this morning as I was going over this text again, we saw this with Abraham too. Oh gosh, this one. This is the size of the universe. <laughs> what did Abimelech do wrong when he received judgment from God? 
through Isaac and Abraham's wives. What did he do? He says, wait, wait a minute. What did he say? <laughs> well, I, I read it this morning in the story of Abraham as well. I don't have time to go through all this stuff. Anyway, judgment came to Abimelech. Why? Because Abraham and Isaac deceived him and lied to him. He was receiving judgment. Abimelech received judgment because he was lied to. He thought, I thought these were your sisters, man. Basically, uh, so Abraham back in his version, which is so odd again, that this happens in, in, in Abraham's life and Isaac's life with their wives. Abraham basically says, paraphrase, God, don't put this on Abimelech, please. Because Abimelech's household, his, man, his maid servants, couldn't have babies. They were, they, were, they were made barren by Yahweh because of what they had done. And so basically, Abraham's saying, Lord, don't hold this against Abimelech. In, in essence, he didn't do anything. It's my fault. So what I'm saying, then we've got to move on. Without this, this is too big. What if that's part of the equation here today? What if that's part of the equation? In the Isaac story specifically, what if, so, if part of the problem isn't the evil vileness of those on the outside of the people of God? It's that they've been lied to. They've been deceived. They've been told something that's not true. They've responded, been judged by Yahweh. Why? Did they do something? He's, he's saying, man, Abimelech, even I believe it's with the Abraham account, makes basically offerings here. Take this, take this. Please, just like we don't want trouble with Yahweh. We don't want trouble with him. Why did you deceive us? That's the, that's the thing that's consistent. Why did you deceive us? Why didn't you tell us the truth? Ugh. So let's just skip to chapter uh, 26, verse 16. Abimelech, okay, to stick to right now where we are, and forgive me if that was a major sidetrack and now you're really confused. So just jump back on the track of thought that we were on earlier. Verse 16, Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are too powerful for, for, for us. And Isaac departed from there and camped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. Okay, he dwelled there. We know we've, we've gone over that countless times. But here's the thing, right? I believe that America, to, to bring all this through to right now, this very second, January the 8th, I believe America is in Genesis chapter 26, verse 16. I believe that's where we are. I believe that the dwellers of the land, the true dwellers of the land, the possessors of the land, are saying, go away from us. Go on. Get out of here. Specifically, the time has arrived, patriotic evangelical America to respond to the Abimelech of the land. What if Abimelech has come? What if the inhabitants of the land have come and they have told patriotic Christian America, get out. It's time to go. This is our land. You've become too great. What will you do? What will you do if that's true? As I go to another verse here, another uh, text. I'm just saying, could that be true? Think about that for a moment while I go to Jeremiah chapter 3. Could it be possible, again, if this is, if this is any kind of rightful connection and imagery for us today, could it be that we are in verse 16 where it has been made clear in this nation? Now, again, let's be mindful. There is an entire earth right now where, where millions of things are going on. This is not just only about America and Yahweh is only concerned about her now. But this is a big, I believe this is a very large moment for this nation, which is very powerful and very huge in control of this kingdoms of men earth that we are now walking upon. So I'm just saying, could this be what's happening right now? <laughs> and again, I, I, I said, I saw today on, on a prophetic, on a prophet's video that he did. That this, this, this individual, well, several, literally, quote, we must continue to stand for liberty. Another one. Yes, 
God has the final word. Well, what does that even mean? What does that even mean? What are we waiting for? We're waiting for, I'm not, but many are, evangel evangelical patriots are waiting still for God to just make everything okay. Please, God, just don't let us lose our liberties. Please, no way would you allow that. I'm telling you, friend, he is. He is. Abimelech has come, the true dweller of the land, where Isaac was not meant to dwell in the first place. And he's saying, get out, leave. And as we keep talking about over and over, Isaac leaves. Isaac does not fight and assault the inhabitants of the land to gain ownership of the land. He moves on. This time, I believe, has come. Patriots have attempted yet again. Oh my gosh, Wednesday was a huge attempt. They think, although again, it's a patriotic pawn game plan in place and they played their part perfectly. They did exactly what was expected of them, of the elite, by the elite. The elite create this, this plan, put it in place, and man, the Patriots did their part like to perfection, led by their leader, their cult leader, Donald Trump, who again, man, wow. He needs an Academy Award for four years of leaving, leading the patriotic evangelicals down this road of the goddess Libertas. Whoa, perfection. I mean, I'm serious. I hadn't thought about that till the last episode. I'm like, man, that was like, that was Oscar worthy. <laughs> wow. When they chose him to be the, the anti-political politician, home run, home run, home run. Grand slam, <laughs> game winning, bottom of the ninth, two outs, three strikes, boom, out of the park, game over. Holy cow, that was good. Yikes. Oh, this time it has not worked. Okay, what happened Wednesday? The Patriots attempt to cram God yet again into this idolatrous nation. It did not work, and we have to ask why. Why did the church not get their way? Let's look real quick. I had a brother who watches this program say, do you think we're seeing Jeremiah 3 and 4 play out right now? Do you think we're seeing Jeremiah chapter 3 and chapter 4 play out in front of our very eyes? And so I read it. Mm, yeah, probably so. Yahweh says, if a husband divorces his wife and goes from him and belongs to another man, will she... Will he, rather, still return to her? Will not that land be completely polluted? You're a harlot with many lovers, yet you turn to me, declares the Lord. Lift up your eyes to the bare heights and see where have you not been violated. By the roads you've sat for them like an Arab in the desert, you have polluted a land with your harlotry, with your wickedness. Therefore, showers are going to be withheld. No spring rain. You had harlots' foreheads. You refuse to be ashamed. Again, just like Wednesday, we didn't do anything. We didn't do anything. It's Antifa, man. We're innocent, peaceful patriots. No, guilt is on our hands. Why? Idolatry. Idolatry. Have you not just now called to me? My father, you are the friend of my youth. Will he be angry forever? Will he be indignant to the end? You have done evil things. You have had your way. Man, how, I mean, how much of this can we read? It, it's the theme throughout. It came about because of the lightness of her harlotry, that she polluted the entire land and committed adultery with stones and with trees. Idolatry everywhere, mixing at every turn. Harlotry. Prostituting herself with other idols including liberty, justice, and freedom for all. It is a spirit. It is a spirit of, of mixing in this nation. And I'm telling you, Yahweh God has used the Abimelechs, the herdsmen of the land, the inhabitants, to say, church, it's time for you to go. It's time for you to go, Christian American church. It is time for you to leave here. In your heart, as I keep saying, in 
your heart, not geographical, in your heart, it is time to come out and to be a sojourner and remember that you are instructed to look for something that is yet before you. So here we are finally at the culmination. We're finally at the end of the line. We're finally at the end. Praise the Father. He's so good to us, y'all. He's so patient. None of us deserve his goodness, his kindness, his patience. None of us. There's none righteous. No, not one. Not one. None righteous. No one's deserving here. But we have to respond to the judgment that's coming to this nation, rightly. Or the elect are going to be led astray, and the Christian American patriotic church is going to be left on an island worshiping a man, crying out for Lady Liberty to please, please stay alive. Please don't leave us. And Yahweh Elohim is going to be taking his people out. And they will not make it. Don't let that be you. I don't want it to be me. But this could be good for the church. This could be good for the church. Again, Isaac did not fight the running off. He moved. Then he understood as he went, he could then begin to move into the covenantal inheritance. But only when he left, only when he left, the, the, con the contention, the strife, the quarreling, the fighting, the hatred, only when he said, you know what, I'm not doing this. I'm not a dweller. Forgive me, Yahweh, for dwelling. We need to do the same thing. So the what we do now. Okay, so this is what I feel like the Father led me to. And I wonder if I should just make this another part. Let's just do that. Let's just stop here and go ahead and get your Bibles out if you need a refresher. Everybody knows this. You've been in the church a, a day <laughs> or a hundred years. You know Hebrews chapter 11. And, and, and as probably about a week ago, when I thought I was going to have the, the culmination of the series then, I was just asking the Father, I need a conclusion, God, because you can't, <laughs> you can't leave me hanging. I can't leave these people hanging with like gloom and doom and correction and correction and judgment and judgment. God, this is for a purpose, and that's the beginning of where we started. The, the, the uprooting and, and willingness to become a sojourner instead of an inhabitant frees us, like it freed Isaac, to become a fulfillment, a walking fulfillment of God's covenantal reality. And so we're going to bring this part to a close here, and we're going to have one more part. We'll be done. And we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 11 because I believe, again, the Father spoke very clear to me, and I'm going to explain why. I'm going to explain why he spoke to me, what he did, and, and what is the significance about what Hebrews chapter 11 contains for us right now as Abimelech the, and the inhabitants of the land are saying, hey, hey, guess what? Get out of here. Get out of here. Friend, I'm going to tell you right now in closing, don't fight it. Patriotic Americans, stop fighting everything. Stop it with this warrior mentality where you're just going to run around with weaponry and, and assault everyone in the name of God. Just stop it. You're looking foolish. It's not working. It's not working. It's not going to work. We need to yield to the judgment that the Father is bringing us into right now in this land in America as 2021 is just getting started. We do not know what this year is going to hold. Nobody does. I won't say the P word. They don't know. They don't know. We will only know what the Father reveals in whatever increment He deems right for us to know. So we better be listening to what the Spirit is saying in this hour to prepare our hearts first and foremost. And anything else that He would give us insight into, because I'm telling you, the elect, I think this year, man, this calendar year, I think we're going to see the elect really get led astray. And I'm just, I'm just going to say, friend, don't let it be you. It could be you. You do know that, right? You do know that... that it could be you that's led astray from following the Messiah and waiting for the bridegroom. I could be led astray right now, tomorrow. I could be led astray. I could, I could believe a lie and a deception and, and inherit more and more idolatry into my life and get further and further away from the covenantal promises of Yahweh Elohim, and I too would be led astray. All of us are, are vulnerable to be led astray, all of us. None are exempt. And so let us be careful, let us be sober again. 
Hebrews chapter 11. If you want to read it again, just as a refresher before we get there, if you read it before I do the, the next episode, you'll, you'll figure it out. You'll see where this is headed. And perhaps you already know, just because you already know Hebrews chapter 11, you're probably thinking, ah, yes, Father, thank you. Thank you for a solution to this problem. As we leave idolatry, as we leave patriotic idolatry and the, the American spirit, as we leave her behind and put her in the grave and say, no, we're going back to Exodus. We're saying we will have no other Elohim above the Elohim, Yahweh himself. We're going to be set free. Free from things we don't even know we're in bondage to. Slaves. That's what's before the church. If she's willing, if she's ready. And man, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's part of the great falling away. Errant rapture doctrine and patriotism, I think, are the two major engines that are going to fuel the falling away, I believe, very quickly. So, man, cut the ties now. Cut them now. Be free. You've been watching the Path to Zion podcast. We are online 24-7 at pathtozion.com. Send us an email. I've been failing to mention that. People have been doing that. Thank you. It's a good way to reach us. If you email me today, I will read it today. Promise. Sure thing, hands down. Send us an email, Podcast at gmail.com is the place to do it. Share these videos, please. Get this message out. Why? The church has got to come awake from her slumber. Yahweh is so good. He's, this is his goodness, friend. And please get that through your head. This is his kindness now. This is his kindness. This is his goodness. This is our hope. Why? Do you want to die in idolatry? separated from him or do you want to be exposed hurt i mean riddled with pain if that's you the tearing away hurts but it's for our good it's because he wants a spotless bride for his son i want to be that i know you want to be it too are you willing to let this one go because this might be the biggest one like i said earlier <laughs> the american spirit is a juggernaut in the spiritual realm of principalities and powers. She is huge. She's huge. We can come out of her, empowered by the Spirit, as we move towards the likeness of the Son, to what? Have one God. His name is Yahweh. That's it. You've been watching the Path Design Podcast. Tune back in. One more part, and we're done with the series, Inhabitants Who Are Meant to Sojourn. A call to come out. We're almost there. Amen.